Hi y'all, welcome to my shop. Can you believe I went out and bought a couple of carbide tools? I want to uh, talk to you about them, about them today. I know some of y'all use carbide, flat carbide tools, what I'm talking about. Uh, some of them you use a little bit, some of them you use a lot, as shown in this poll, poll results I did on my community tab on, on YouTube a while back, uh, based on about 246 votes. Somewhat anecdotal, but I think it does give us a pretty good idea that, that uh, Flat carbide is certainly an option for a lot of people and is popular with a lot of people. I thought I'd buy a couple of inexpensive ones uh, just to experiment and play around with. Maybe I can entice my granddaughters to do some, uh, do some wood turning because they, they certainly have a flatter learning curve than uh, bevel rubbing, uh, slicing conventional tools that, that I've gotten used to from the beginning. Now let me emphasize a couple of points. Number one, I, I paid for these two tools. It's not a, not a promotion. I'm not trying to uh, sell you sell you uh, tools, although I am providing a link on my uh, Amazon shop uh, in the show notes. If if that's something you're interested, you can click on on uh, and find these on Amazon. Disclaimer: If you buy anything uh, from me from Amazon using the links, I will get paid a small commission. I know in this video, I'll probably some of my biases might slip out, and I might mention I, I will touch on a couple of pros and cons of of carbide tools, but it's not my intent to go into a great deal of detail. I'm going to save that for another vi video after I get more experience with these these tools and I can go over it in a little more uh, detail. I'll also have a, a future video on how to make uh, the handles for these for these tools, so y'all stay tuned for that. I'll have them at the end of these show notes when, when those videos come out. I also mentioned I did a, a couple of videos on carbide tools a while back. If you're interested in that, that'll be at the end of this video as well. Okay, these are the two tools I bought. Uh, I want to start off with some kind of superficial things. First, they came in the same packaging. Uh, very well packed. I was, I, they couldn't have been packed any better. The tools were wrapped inside these containers, and then these containers were wrapped in, in padding, and then there was paper in a box. So, uh, very, uh, very careful packing. Uh, these were wrapped. The cutters and the screw were in a separate little little container so they they wouldn't get bumped or damaged uh, both of them um, so much for for the packing uh, they also I can tell that both of these tools were made in the same by the in the same uh, plant because they've got this ASIG tool inspected however I purchased them from two separate uh, companies now let's talk about the tools briefly these are uh, 10 inches long both of them they're a half an inch square, same as the uh, Easy Wood tools. They are of stainless steel, which keeps them from getting uh, from rusting very hard. They've also got a very round. Sh uh, they've got a round shaft on them, which makes it a lot easier to fit tools to. I'll have another video on making uh, tool handles on a uh, on a midi lathe. I forgot to mention each tool comes with a very nice uh, brass ferrule. They they are not polished to a mirror surface as the more as the most expensive ones are but you know they they don't have a lot of nicks and scratches and, and it's what I'd call a very good good surface certainly uh, more than adequate for a wood turning tool the edges have all been aerist uh, uh, nicely uh, I think they're on one tool I think it's this one it could probably stand to be rubbed on once or twice with another piece of sandpaper but other than that I'm I'm pleased with it too. The grinding here, again, not polished, but that's not necessary, but the angle is, appears to be good. Uh, the, the tapping appears to be good. Uh, they, the, the cut uh, for the actual uh, tool bit seems, appears to be, be very uh, flat without any, any gaps. The machining, I thought, was very well done in terms of the flats. The, uh, the cutters fit on there uh, snug. Uh, it's rounded for the round cutter, uh, flat for the flat cutter. Uh, happy with that. Uh, I know a number of y'all have made this. It's not rocket science making these. Uh, my metalworking skills aren't as good as my wood turning skills, and frankly, I didn't want to go out and have to uh, buy the bar stock. Um, if I did, I'd have bought carbon steel, uh, like stuff sold by by Captain uh, Captain Eddie. And tapping these can be a challenge, as shown in, in this uh, video here by my buddy uh, Rick, Rick Turns. Uh, not, uh, machining is not always as easy as it, as it looks. Uh, the one thing I would want to point out that I thought was kind of interesting, 
the cutters, uh, the 14 millimeter flat cutter, uses one size screw. Um, each of these, they use a, a Torx screw, and it comes with the, uh, with the screwdriver. But each one, each of the two tips has a slightly different hole because I'm sure these were uh, for industrial use purchased off the shelf. Uh, so as a result, because the holes are a different size, they did have a, an exact matching uh, screw and it does come with the appropriate torque size wrench for that screw. But you've got to keep up with these separate, uh, if you buy these two, you've got to keep up with both these separate uh, uh, wrenches. Perhaps some of y'all are going to, at that point where you're interested in making some of these tools, and if so, maybe these pictures will, uh, will help give you a better sense of the profile. Again, an important consideration, I think, is if you buy these inexpensive carbide cutters, just be aware you may have to tap a different hole and, and get a screw that's an exact uh, match. Uh, so you might want to consider buying those from a company where you, you can where these are matched for you because otherwise that could be kind of tricky. And it is important that this profile, uh, that the screw fits this bevel profile perfectly. So number one, it won't break the carbide, and number two, it will be able to hold it down very, very snugly. Again, these are uh, half an inch size, same as the Easy Wood full size um, tools. Uh, there are smaller ones you can buy over the internet uh, from Banggood or Amazon. Uh, just be aware that, I w personally, I wouldn't get anything smaller than the half inch. I think the three eighths, unless you're doing some very, very small detail uh, work. I think this is a good size. Again, this is a 16 millimeter round cutter and a 14 millimeter uh, square square cutter. I did not buy a profile cutter, which might have been a nice addition. I might look at that in the in the future. As I said, I'll be doing another video uh, giving more details on using those those uh, tools that I bought and talking about the pros and cons of carbide versus conventional cutters. I guess all I want to say at this point is don't rush out and buy them. Uh, do your do your research. Uh, don't be sold them. I, I compared a little bit. Maybe this is an unfair comparison to being sold an annuity by an insurance salesman. That, that doesn't mean that annuities are bad. It just means know what you're buying and know the pros and cons. One of them that it, the store is going to tell you that uh, it's cheaper because you don't have to buy a sharpening system. You don't have to buy a, a grinder. Um, there, there are there's some some merits to what they say, except the first time you want to you buy another tool that is not a carbide, all that savings goes out the window, or you never get to buy anything but carbide. So keep that in mind. Thanks for watching. I'll have links here for a couple of related videos. And remember, y'all stay safe. Come on back here.